Look, we've only done it. It's yeah. always only four in the book. Okay. July 21st. Do you have a second? I'll second. I was second. All in favor of this? Make a correction. Anyone opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Let's talk about now the approval of August meeting minutes. But first, are there any corrections? First off, it's Mary Sarge. Thank you. Second Thank off, you. I believe Mary spells her name N E T T I E. That's correct. Not N E T T Y. Okay. Um, under shock art. Yes. It was. <coughs> It was a little unclear in these minutes what we determined the moving forward winners would be excluded from entering next year. The, the motion was clear, but the if an artist wins in one year on year off. Okay, I need to was, clean up the yeah. I need to clean up that the verbiage. And also at the very last sentence on the first page, legible is spelled L E G I B L E. Okay. Carol is here. And that's all. Hey, ma'am. I'm so sorry. You're fine. All right. Spell legible correctly. How oh, ironic. Where is this legible? It's on the very bottom of the first page. Okay. Legible. Okay. Yes. Great. We'll do.
cute Longmont is and downtown, and some people are like, I never bring my kids. I'm coming to Longmont downtown to bring my family here. And I was like, yeah, you listen out, you listen out. So, um, that's what happened today. What else do you all want to know? Anything you want to know for me doesn't mean I have the answer, but I can attempt and maybe lie a little bit, but I have one comment. Sure. Thank you so much for the plug on the long monster. That was awesome. Oh, the, I, I was like, I hope Angela don't kill me because I probably said something wrong. But no, it was perfect. It was what? awesome. It was fantastic. So if you all don't um, and have not seen, our own Justin Beach uh, does seasonally, so I think twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall, his own version of like, he tries to be Jimmy Carson. He tries to be so funny. Sometimes he's funny, and sometimes he's not. He laughs at himself. <laughs> yes. But uh, but he gives it he gives it a good good all. So uh, Shakita was on his last show, and I will send you the link. Uh, but his first, I think, impromptu question, right, mm -hmm. was, "Hey, so our public places is pretty sweet, and you're the lia the city council liaison. Tell me about that." And so, uh, totally off the cuff. Shakita throws down, hey, if you want to participate in your community, here's tons of ways to do it. Just did a new mural and um, there's room on the board and just like nailed it and it was fantastic. So, yay. thank you. Very much. And this is the only one I met, the only board I mentioned. He actually asked me, what did I like? I think one of the things of boards that I like being on, and, yeah. I, and I mentioned, yeah, or something other than I haven't been here lately, but. Doesn't mean I'm not watching you. <laughs> <laughs> so I will send that link to everyone. But, uh, yeah, so thank you for that. Awesome. Any other questions for me or comments? Or? Okay. Thank you for the work you do. Yeah. <laughs> <It's a lot. laughs> <laughs> and thank you for supporting the Art and Public Places budget, which is coming around to the budget season. Well, don't know. I will say the mayor wanted to, for me to plug in. I don't know if I did it already, but under the um, the walkway, the bike and the walkway is like over there, over where you go under. Yeah. Um, she wants to see art. Yeah. Um, so in that box area. over. Yeah. It gets hit with graffiti a lot. So, a lot. I um, know. So. Which we will get there in this agenda, but Ninth and Alpine has been um, has been a real a real trick for us. And so once we get that finished up and put the graffiti sealant on it and feel comfortable putting art that it can continue to be maintained and not get completely ruined, then that's the next one. But until we know that we can keep it maintained, we can invest artwork in that space. But dancing with that a little bit but I know she it's a, in rhythm on the rivers pathway so it's highly visible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also we visited the uh, today we visited the sugar mill. Oh wow. So I got to go in there today. Tons of graffiti. Full has that suit? Mm -hmm. It should have been <laughs> certainly should have been on it but it's half of the specials. I know. <laughs> Nothing but like yeah hanging down from the pipes and everything, but um, I didn't touch anything. But um, graffiti throughout the entire sugar mill. Inside, inside. Inside. Not really that much out, yeah. but definitely inside. Mm -hmm. On all three floors. Wow. They say some of the floors have some pretty cool art. Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. So, I don't know, but that's something, you know, for the future to really be thinking about. Um, they get ready, hopefully by the end of the year, get ready to start cleaning up the sugar mill, which will be between 10 to $30 million to be able to do. Um, and that's, the city first have to annex that property because it's county property. For those of you, that's things like, see stuff like that, I'm learning being on city council, like, we in Walmart, what are you talking about, right? But the county owns a lot of property within the city of Walmart, and so a lot of times people think that, like, you know, ask why we can't make these decisions because we don't own that land. And so, although we use our 
resources, our taxpayer money with our police officers when people call the police, when they see people out there. So it's our officers that go out there. And so those are our resources, right? But it's county land. So that's why it's important for us to annex it into the city because we're using our resources anyway to take care of. Is the county going to pay to clean it up? Well, I think it's the, uh, the developer and they're trying to also, um, Tony Chicong is going to um, apply for certain grants with the city, not with the city, with the state and federal grants. Um, I forgot the title of the grants, but it has something to do with environmental, this fair environmental grants. But of course, it's not up to $10 million. Um, so they're, they are looking into trying to um, apply for more grant money and see where the money is and the environmental money for that project. And of course, it will be housing um, on that property as well. And we will be able to walk to Main Street, downtown Beaumont from there. Um, they really want to, the developer really want to use the greenway mostly for bikes and walkway to go um, downtown. That's what I learned today. Yes. So the last time I was following this, there was a, there was a grant a grant proposal to write the plan for the remediation. Mm -hmm. So that we're still at that point. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So there first will be the plan to remediate before we even step foot to do any remediation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we still have consultants, and we had so much stuff going on with that property. Um, but meanwhile, they're still looking at what type, how is it going to be funded, right? So, um, so they can be ready to go when that time comes. Yeah, but I mean, that's more great opportunities for, for us, um, especially if we're going to use the greenway and the walkway. How can we maybe even have something on the walkway and, you know, the kids and they're on their bikes and make it cute and colorful? things like that to all the way to the, it's like follow the yellow brick road to downtown, you know, something like that. It'll be, and starting with those projects early on, uh, even in the developer stage and even in the planning stage is when we can utilize our dollars, of course, to the max because they're integrated as we've been speaking about for a long time, so. Uh, and some of those projects, frankly, are coming up, not that one, but We'll get more practice in this in these integrating projects, right? Awesome. I have a question um, that I'm not, I'm not sure what the right question is. Um, this project, it's done by a developer, but is that considered capital improvements? Would we get money from that? No, I mean, I can't speak to exactly what that would be, but very likely. Kim, I mean, very likely there would be a CID construction project in the same step or scheme. Yeah, I don't think it's developed enough to know the answer to the question yet, but Angela's right. I think very likely there will be state dollars that are end up being spent on that project. And as soon as they use them, there will be money funds that are created. So, yeah. I mean, imagine a bridge, like that's all it takes is yeah. you know, something with the St. Greg Greenway alone, right? Yeah, think infrastructure. Yeah, roads, sidewalks, you know, all of those can, can create pretty large scale problems. Oh, well, anything else? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, moving on to agenda item number eight Sister Cities Project Update, City and or Susan. Do you want me to give just a quick little state of the state before we go forward? Um, okay, so state of the state. In August, uh, the selection panel for the Sister Cities Project met and saw the three finalists do in-person proposals. Those in-person proposals happened and artworks came back and the selection panel voted on two projects, one as a primary and one as an alternate. Then those two different projects 
went through what in our policy and procedure is called the internal review committee, which means city attorney's office, which means the parks department, which means, of course, I look at it, and um, also risk management. And they came back with their changes. The primary park proposal that was selected had significant changes because of its size, because of the way that it deviated from the scope of the original um, call for entry, and also, and most importantly, because it frankly is attractive to be blind. And so uh, the city attorney gave me the list of requirements, risk management gave me the list of requirements, and the parks department said, that's fine, but this artwork um, in the state that it will become cannot be in this location. It's going to have to move 10 feet over and into another bed. Um, so then the selection panel came back together and said, um, we understand that the city attorney and the, the city, basically, I'm just gonna say the city from now on, right? Encompassing all of those folks. Uh, the city has different requirements. We would like the artists to do a redesign and we are giving them a deadline so that that redesign could get through the internal review committee again and be here for you this evening. So we have that. In addition to that, so that's the primary artist, in addition to that is the secondary alternate artist. There were two very minor changes to be made there, one for safety and climbing, and one because the selection panel had an opinion of, um, and you'll see it in a minute, that there is an entryway into it, but they also kind of wanted an exit to make it a little more conducive to the space itself. So let's start by looking at the space really quickly, and then I will answer questions before we look into these redesigns. So, um, whoop, whoop. <laughs> what did you say? This is Flanders Park. It's in the northern part of the city, northwestern part of the city. That is McIntosh Lake. That is the northeastern, I guess, if you will, corner of McIntosh. And this pink dot is the site that was originally selected for this artwork as it was written in the scope of work. This little triangular bed here, um, which right now is full of Russian sage, and we will have to do some. Um, remediation, I guess, to the plant life there, but it, it will have to be removed, um, but will then be replanted. This is the alternate site for the first artist, okay? Um, does everybody know about where I'm talking? Okay. Um, this is a look from the site to the kind of south and west. These are the Twin Peaks right here. And it's this lawn turf space that was the original um, location. And then this bed here is the alternate location. Okay. Um, and just to get a little more clarity into what that bed looks like, that's um, so the McIntosh Lake is to your left. This is a walkway that goes back into that neighborhood. This is the bed we're speaking of. So here. There it is, kind of coming from a frontal view, so that would be looking like north. And that is the look if you came kind of around, because this uh, walkway goes around this piece of turf, if you will. That's the view that you will see of the Twin Peaks. So again, not far from the original, but enough that it, um, you know, it's it's not beautiful. It's not beautiful. Okay. Um, we won't go deep into uh, what the original artwork looked like. Do we need to? I mean, it doesn't. It really is a good point, right? Um, so this is the redesign for the uh, primary work. So, and these are the kinds of technical drawings, and you know, we always learn lessons, right? And this is mine: is that I need to specify that these kinds of technical drawings are required to submit. This is what we should have seen in the first place, but needless to say. Um, so this is the work now. It is a, let's start from the bottom up. So the way that it is mounted is a concrete caisson that goes 36 inches into the ground. It's a fairly significant amount of concrete work. Um, it sticks up about six inches and then it's hardware pulled into what is a um, stainless steel, um, uh, steel tube 
that then has um, some sort of, of connection to the aluminum sheeting, which is clad with the mosaic on top of that. Um, on its on its uh, it's two feet three inches. The the largest section of the column is two feet three inches, and at its shortest width. Hmm, doesn't specify here. I know it does somewhere, but um, anyway, it's probably about half of that, right? Okay. So, do you know what we're talking about? We're talking about a, a kind of a cute rectangular-looking right. look, yeah, column. And then on top of the column is the sculpture, and the sculpture is uh, two flat silhouettes, I suppose is the way to say it, and then they are flush mounted together, so they're sandwiched together. Uh, and then there's a structure on the inside. No, so it's okay. not in the round. Okay. That's a very good question, though. That's very good. Yeah. So here is the best image that I can tell you of. You know, from front to back, it's this wide, right? It's not going to have negative space. You won't be able to see through it. So there will be some sort of um, overlapping piece there. I imagine also clad with that um, mosaic that will go over the top. But it really is kind sure. of a what's that? But you're not sure. It will. That's a specification we're going to get into, but it's it's certainly not um, in detail. It's not all there. But so it is kind of a right and left, and then um, and Pamela, I'm going to get to okay. in just a second because um, I may answer your question. So then <laughs> along each side, um, so the four sides of the columns have these different messages, and the messaging is also in that same mosaic, uh, so very, very colorful mosaic on all sides. And let me show you what that's going to look like if I didn't close the thing. So let's look, so let's look at yeah, sorry. Oh, the light, you can write technical docs. This one. Um, I think I'm So um, these are, are obviously the sculpture, right, that are mounted on the top. Um, height is five feet. Okay. The column itself is eight feet, um, which will include the bump out from the ground to the first step, I guess, if you will, the six-inch step of the concrete that, and then the hardware. So the column itself is seven and a half plus a little bit. So the whole entire thing is over 14 feet tall. And then these are the messages that will be on each of the sides. So um, it, to give you an idea of what that will look like. Wow. Okay. So quite a bit different from the original, but certainly has elements um, of the original. I can say that we did, uh, the artists had a fairly significant task to bring it to what the city had asked for. And he did comply, of course, to make um, the concessions that we were asking for. He also successfully brought in the uh, the language component that um, would have likely been left out otherwise. So um, it did serve him that way. So that is that. Should we talk about this, or should we look at the other first? Yes. Is that going to have a compañero? So is that going to have a tilde? On the end, or he's what? fluent speaker, so I'm sure that whatever um, and however it is spelled okay. will be accurate. But we certainly will have it cross checked. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah. So the city was not worried about somebody throwing a book. Uh, nope. Maybe. Nope. The concessions that he has made fit the the standard document. Or what is called an attractive nuisance, not true. Means likely to clog by a young person. Okay. So, selection panel, I'm looking at you. So, should we look at, should we discuss this or should we look at our alternate? Let's look at the alternate okay. and I'll discuss what task force. Okay. Let's start the panel. Okay. Um, because where we are, according to the city attorney's office um, in this process, is that uh, we have successfully 
according to the, our policies and procedures. We have successfully um, spoken to the selection panel at large um, sufficiently. So the recommendation, the last portion to go to a contract is the recommendation from the task force to this body, this body approves the next steps, and then we um, start the contracting phase of this. Okay, yes. I just am trying to lean in, and can you tell me what the lettering and the color is on the aluminum? Yeah. You said mosaic, but. Yes. Um, okay, if you get motion sickness from me scrolling, it's time to close your eyes. Hmm. That's the best example of what it is. So it's a high fire um, tile process. So that stands out from the aluminum. It's, it's yes, the aluminum is the yes. So the aluminum is the base, and then there's the mortar, and then there is the mosaic cladding, and the clad is does not protrude. So to say that um, it's as smooth as a mosaic can be, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't have elevation, right? Okay, thank you. Yeah, no good question. Okay. Um, okay. So without, um, well, I guess I should show. So the alternate then um, is this uh, pavilion and the concessions that had to be made. Oh, so it's got you know benches um, and the concession that had to be made that was the preference of the selection panel is that it in fact is open on both sides. So that green seat is now open. Fact. And the concrete that would be poured as a sidewalk would go from both sides of the um, sidewalk that's in existence. It would come into the turf, meet the gazebo, be flush for ADA compliance with the turf or with the rather um, concrete base that this gazebo is then mounted on. And the other piece was um, that from the seat to any um, armhole where someone could grab on and climb and swing has to be that magical seven and a half feet tall. So this piece is now going to be taller. Um, so let me show you. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, I'd say, but obviously just for scale, you can see here how much taller it will be. Um, and obviously now, Sides. So this is the alternate, yes. And this is the one that has the ball on the top of it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So more like a gazebo, um, but now, of course, with an entry and an exit. All right. So with that, um, both of these uh, redesigns, again, have gone through, through the city. Um, and so here we are for the test. So, I, I wanted to start by saying this whole process with Sister City has been quite a learning experience. Um, long time delays, pandemics, sites that weren't real in the sites <laughs> that then got moved. And I think um, a, another learning opportunity that's been presented to us through this, um, through your particular project um, that maybe we can, and, and Angela would know the ins and outs of this, but would be that after a selection panel possibly made two or three recommendations, the top two or three, however, whatever it came down to, that um, internal review would possibly, then it would be sent off to internal review before we said, boom, bada, boom, bang. Um, that and then that way we would know the risks involved, the modifications involved, the ins and outs instead of after the fact. And that that might be an 
opportunity to rethink procedures about this. Just oh, another learning opportunity. Um, Cindy and I have talked about it, Cindy being on the task force with me, and our recommendation as AIPP task force was that, um, that we go with Joe's. Um, and a couple of reasons being that um, we felt like the, and, and maybe I'm speaking not PC on this, but the wow factor of um, Mario's kind of dissipated from what it was to what it would have to be, no, um, only because he's following the guidelines now um, of what um, internal review said had to happen with it. Um, and so that, that left a different aspect of his art um, that was not what we saw in the original selection then. Um, we, I, we felt like Jody's kept the same site um, and didn't move it anywhere, so we liked that because it's a great grassy area that the public and sister cities is able to um, use um, without it being in a crosswalk per se, um, and people could put chairs and whatever if they had, um, whatever events they were having where you have to remember the whole thing on Jody's is only 10 feet yeah. across. So it's not like this, you know, where you're going to come inside in 10 feet. So, um, but we just, after discussing it, felt like because of those ideas, um, and I don't, I don't want to demean or um, bring down any of Mario's as I mean the efforts were incredible that they both had that he particularly had to do in this. But with it being too deep, um, it really created more of was it just a sign? Was it just um, a marker? Um, it, it wasn't that unbelievable wow fact <laughs> that happened at first. So again, a learning opportunity there that maybe we need to think through in procedures or when we see something come through like that, go, ooh, let's put brakes on and we gotta do this part first. Um, and I don't know procedurally how that would work. Um, so a motion um, would be that um, AIPP, that the task force on AIPP would recommend that we go ahead and move forward with Jody's. I think her timeline was a little more, um, um, was quicker than Mario's was going to be, as, as I recall it right from what she said. Um, and, um, but in that motion that we want to allow the selection panel to come back together, we can be to, no. No. Well, oh, 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 so, oh, oh, so what moves. we're um. recommending is that the artwork originally chosen through no fault of the artist right. is significantly different from what the task force is not voted on. Significantly. It's not if you think you're too it's a little, it's still by default, but it's a little thin signpost. Um, what we're recommending, therefore, is that the AIPP Commission vote to approve the gazebo, the Butterfly Pavilion, as the artwork for this project. So I think then, um, yeah, it's definitely a discussion. Um, I, I really have to agree with Susan that the original Piece that Mario did. It was a wild factor. I mean, if you came down into Flanders Park and saw what he created, if it had been a movie set, it would have been great because you couldn't help but notice it was it was just fantastic. But the practicality of trying to have that there, it, it's, it's 
it's not possible because of risk management and everything. And so he had to change it from this giant goose butterfly into something probably different that's kind of off to the side. I agree, it's more like a signpost. Um, that's not to say that we couldn't love what he created. It was, right. it was really yes. impressive. The original was 14 feet. The entire piece was 14 feet. So if that gives you, uh, you know, it's a third, the sculpture itself is a third of the size. Uh, there was no pedestal or anything. It was just, I mean, you'd come down there and you'd see this giant goose, you know, with the butterfly wings, which, you know, got the idea of people coming from Mexico or butterflies coming from Mexico and everybody migrating from one place to the other. And the original ask for an art piece, because we thought it was going to be in a new park where there are no trees or anything, we were asking for a shape, some kind of shape, sculpture, anyway. It didn't fit that at all, but as he pointed out, there are other places where people can sit in shape, and we could even have all of his, you know, we have a bunch of kids that come from Japan and Mexico at the same time, and we're now having some of the kids come from the reservation too, so we have quite a large group, and they can easily meet in the pavilion that's already there, but this art piece would still be something that we could gravitate to, and other people could also use it for place, you know, conversation place in the, the gazebo or the piece that Jody came up with really, really fits what was originally asked for anyway. Uh, so they, they're two completely different art pieces and um, I, I just think that Mario's, because of had to be altered so much, it's no longer what I saw in the first place. So, um, since I missed all of the creep work, um, so the, the, the meaning, so what is the meaning or the interpretation of the gazebo or butterfly? And also, I, I think I just heard you say the butter is a uh, Goose with um, what did you say? Well, I just want to know what the meaning of the two art sculptures are. What does that mean? Oh, okay. I think we had asked artists to come up with something that would represent our exchange with Mexico. And because the modern butterflies do migrate from Mexico to Colorado, mm -hmm. um, that was why a butterfly was symbol of, of the exchange. So here is the uh, or the call for uh, the artists when they were given the so the selection panel went through a number of applications and narrowed it down to these three and upon receiving word that their qualifications had moved on for consideration to create the site specific proposal this is what they were given and so from the very beginning, even when someone was um, um, supplying their qualifications, this is what they had read. And so uh, seeking a Colorado artist or artist team proficient in the creation of site-specific sculpture to serve as shady gathering space to celebrate the 25 years of Sister Cities partnership between Guzman, Mexico, and Colorado, Loma, Colorado. Um, then talking about the exchange, the space overlooking kind of our symbols of the um, Long's Peak and, and Eaker. And then, um, sorry if you get motion sickness, close your eyes. Um, we included, of course, the um, Sister Cities um, points that come from their mission statement. So municipal cooperation, leadership, etc. And then, the link, oops, I pass it. There it is. Community bonding and history. So all of the artists were to consider in when they were creating their proposals. Community bonding and history of sister cities, relationships, social impact, culture, reflecting the past, the present, and the future. The connection and access, of course, borders and transformation, and gathering celebration space, providing shade. 
So from that, then each of them came with their individual proposals saying how the artwork in one way or another connected to this or how it within the space provided allowed these points to be accomplished. And so one artist went one way with monumental sculpture, right? Um, and highlighted exactly your point of what the park is providing and then the other stuck to a pretty, um, you know, and then uh, all of the points pretty consistently through the artwork. And so, um, what you didn't see, but I'll show, of course, just so everyone is really very clear. So, there's a gaze involved for this reflection in and out. Um, there are the butterflies represented when she punches them out of the, um, the cladding or uh, her aluminum cladding, and then she welds them into the shapes and then and that's like the ceiling inside the inside the yeah. ceiling to see the roof behind it and there's all the butterflies and then cut out and then the cut out butterflies are also part of that. so each of them did a significant amount of research uh, and explained all of those pieces and parts um, mm -hmm. within their presentations so both of them did a significant amount of um, research into these mines so again, both. Um, well, from from outside looking in, from what I just saw, I think that the piece, the gazebo, is gorgeous. It's beautiful, but that to me, with the podium, with the long line and the different colors, that speaks to me suspicious. To me. Um, well, and by, sure, the other person who do this most specific on the. Selection panel might feel the same. I, I love what is done with using Spanish and English on it. And um, the, as you say, the colorful. colorful yeah, design. it just it just when I think of when I think of the exchange and um, and I think of the students, um, I think of vibrancy, right? And I think that. To me, that speaks to me when I saw this because I didn't see anything else. I didn't. I hadn't seen any other art or anything. This is my first time seeing this in the house of the gazebo. But when I think of Sister City, I do love the imprint of the butterflies of the gazebo. I think that's pretty cool. It's very elegant, very um, beautiful. Um, I don't know. I'm just giving my two cents. So well, you know, she still is on. For Sister Cities also, so she comes to our board meetings and is aware of what we're doing with kids. So um, that's, that's a very good point. So, uh, oh yeah, go ahead, Laura. Uh, I think in the gazebo, it just reminds me of Aladdin. I think I think of you know like a magic carpet and Aladdin and when mm -hmm. I see that, it's you know I, I don't think of it as Alma and I don't think of it as uh, Spanish. So I think um, just getting back to I'm going to put my uh, Angela listening to the city attorney hat back on. Um, so the conversations regarding design, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, creative, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, have been had. So where we are in policy and procedure is very much at kind of a precipice of that you as the body um, can make a decision to. Um, have the selection panel reconvene and see these designs and make their their recommendation, which then comes back through Susan and Cindy to this body again for the final selection panel vote on these redesigns. Um, according to the city attorney's office, because we have gone through the selection panel process, this body now has the authority to make this decision. Right. But what we're not doing is talking, you know, again, about creative, et cetera, et cetera, beyond. So you can do one of two things. You can um, make, you know, someone make a motion to accept the recommendation as presented, which is actually on the table, technically. Um, or um, you could give the selection panel, you could just approve whatever the selection panel approves in advance, or they could come back to you in October. Um, 
The only thing I caution about time is that um, what is very clear, what's very clear, is that Sister Cities is having an exchange next year and needs to have this work installed by July 1. Oh. So every 30 days that goes by is just 30 days <clears throat> into the future, right? So, um, I, yeah. What's the material is that I use on the very top for the piece? Is that like aluminum or just because like, I was just trying to get a picture of like, the original because the original was like the metal cut out, right? And then aluminum shape plate cladded high flyer ceramic tile. So he's he has done this kind of work before, right? Um, uh, it, it's the girl on the uh, yeah yeah Corpus right yeah. Um, he's very he's he's uh, very understanding and knowledgeable of the material that he's so that's so, so, so that's great I was just curious I was just like trying to think yeah, yeah. 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 Sure it would be better. Um, but yes mosaic so very colorful and a lot of color right so the motion that's on the table right now I'm not the email me is that the um, that the task force for the selection panel is suggesting that we move forward with the alternate. So, according to our friend Robert, right, uh, <laughs> someone can second that motion, or we can revise that motion, or we can remove that motion. Revise the alternate and then use the vote. Correct. I'll second that. Okay. So do you have anything else to say? No, <laughs> I, I don't vote. <laughs> you don't vote, no, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Melody, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. No, I just, um, I wanted to give my two cents, I suppose. Uh, this is the first I've really seen a little bit more thoroughly of the projects as opposed to more of the sites and higher levels. Um, and I really appreciate the, the, the task force explanation of it. Um, I know just from, from my background with working with cities, going back to what the requirements are, what the ask was, um, I can see why the alternate is sort of fits the description of what was asked initially and what was what was wanted initially. So I can certainly understand why the alternate is is preferable. So I, I would feel comfortable. Also, she had like something like 1,600 different colors, she could do that. She presented it on this black background, which was a poor choice in my opinion, but the, the gazebo was sort of a dark blue, but we could ask her to do it any color. That is true. It could be turquoise or something. I mean, it could be any color. Or a It's color orange or black. It's powder coating, so it comes in pretty much every shade of natural. And in fact, glossy and matte, right? Oh, yeah. She presented that, but she did. Okay. We go. Yeah. Further discussions? Okay, we have a motion and a second. So, all in favor of accepting the gazebo as the piece of art, please raise your hand. And anyone opposed? Thank you. So, the motion passes to accept the gazebo. I will move forward with contract language and make sure um, you know that both artists know that you know again um, they have to go through the city contract um, and then hopefully we can get that eight by next month. Yes. Um, I just wanted to make sure that when they had to do the modifications, that they they got paid to do the modification. Excellent question. So um, each of our artists were paid fifteen hundred dollars for their proposals, okay. and when we go back for modification, that is part of the proposal project. Um, the way I explain it often is, if you are going to use a carpenter to create a bench, and uh, you ask them, you know, I need to see it, and you suddenly ask for them, you want to see screws rather than nails, right? It is within their qualification, within their ability 
to make certain adjustments, right? Um, and this project specifically is a little unusual because of um, because the work presented was so far out of the original scope. Um, it was not unfair to say, hey, guess what? Um, we asked for apples and we got kumquats. We need to kind of get meat in the middle here, right? Uh, so that was a very, very, very fair ask. So um, no additional funds, but certainly paid a fair wage for the work that was done. And my learning opportunity was making sure in the documentation of what is required for your proposal, technical, we require um, every artist to go through um, structural engineering, right? So when load, there's no load, make sure it doesn't fall on anybody. Um, the technical drawings are going to be due to that structural engineer at some point. We don't ask them to pay, make that payment in advance, but those technical drawings, asking those as part of the proposal is completely legitimate and we should have asked for that. So. Did we mention anything about height requirements? We sure do. <laughs> Seven and a half feet is a magic number. Okay. Okay, very good. I know that that was the bulk of our meeting. We're going to go through the rest of it, but yeah. Thank you. All right. And I will update the sister cities. Uh, I'll send an email so they can expect to hear. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Sue. Very good. Very interesting process. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the spoken project update, which looks like the grand opening this is Sunday from three to six. Oh, Monday. So Monday, uh, the spoke building itself, Boulder County Housing Authority, is doing tours, etc., of the spoke. And um, I don't know if you've driven by recently, but AJ is well underway. So you will see him up on his lift usually after noon, and he goes quite into the evening, and he's completely on schedule because. It's been so bloody hot, so yes. no no rain is good for him. Yeah, and oh, he considered the composition and played with the different birds, and it looked really weird. It looked like they were attacking each other, so they <laughs> all so he's sticking with the original composition, but he is adding more hummingbirds. So is that, yeah, that's really anticipated to be done. Uh, no later than the end of this month, but he built in. Um, contingency time for bad weather, and I mean it's been hot, so that's he's bad. On he's really he's cooking. He's really moving. I didn't want to see him before he out. Yeah, so it's go it's like it's yeah. been really hot or rain. Or right. really hot or rain. But yeah, he hasn't had bad weather. So. He came yeah. out of nowhere all of a sudden. I looked up today and I was like, whoa! Like I meant to drive by and take pictures before I gave. Yeah, and that's a heck of a lift. If you haven't seen him up there on that lift working, I would be wolf. So we're the faint of heart. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> what is the grand building? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. The spoke, the, yeah, the actual what, building. What, what, oh, the building. So we get to walk into people's apartments. I think, yeah, yeah, I think there's like a tour of like the building and its amenities and probably about Boulder County Housing Authority's like offices. Um, yeah, you know, probably not through personal residence, but I mean, I'm sure they, they have like a center and stuff in there. Yeah, my understanding. Yeah. One of my coworkers lives there, but yeah, like they they definitely are like pretty like community oriented in the whole building itself. So that would make the most sense if they were showing you around what they would have to offer. So um, maybe we'll see what their boardroom looks like and <laughs> take a field trip on it. I could ask. Very cool. Okay. All right. Uh, shock art update. Uh, the final uh, box is being primed this weekend, and so shock art artists are all under contract and will be painting. Yep. Okay. Oh, and we did a tour um, of the one across the street, and when Kevin from LBC says, the, you know, Satan's children, the hornets, wasps live right here. And they all came out like on cue. It was awesome. So, <laughs> I was like, ah! so that's good because I think that there's a lot of artists who are really yeah, gung ho and getting underway and not letting me know that they're planning on painting. And he needs to go and bump on that thing so all the critters go away so no one gets hurt. 
and like, I don't think people believe them, so it was on cue. They just started coming out. It's like you, in the rose. Thank you. Anyway, so yeah, that's a really right along. Um, I have a question. Yes. Are we um, are we planning for next year? No. We can't. Okay. <laughs> Is there, am I the only person on the task force, or are you still going to be on the task force? What yes, we have okay. the relationship with task forces when we, because we're kind of coming to the end of the year's uh, projects, and so an executive team meets in October as per AIPP guidelines. We'll have new um, projects, and we're going to have to shake up task forces. I just think we'll yes. to select boxes earlier next year. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll send Kevin a note send it, asking him to send us his rusty options. And I'll also send you the uh, picture of the map that we had people serve the ones they wanted to see. That one. This is the this is the one they sent, the new one for this year, which I separated into quadrants to make it easier. Awesome. And it's all up to date. I even updated the ones we're doing this year in the game. So happy to send you copies of that one. Absolutely. And as soon as um, these folks are done, we are redoing our pamphlets. Yeah. We're well over 50 now, so we need a new one. Okay. All right. Neighborhood improvement project community mural. I believe this is the neighborhood task task force task task force yep. project. Yep. Which is amazing. Yes. Pamela, you were there. Oh, yes, I was. I assume you were there. Well, I just, um, I, I thought uh, it, it went really well. The first day we didn't have, we had like eight volunteers, which was okay, but by the third day we had uh, like at least 20, I think, that, that could, people, and uh, it, what was really fun is that there were a lot of children and that painted and they were very, excited about participating in it and I mean they I had this one guy tell me that he felt really accomplished <laughs> I feel so accomplished now and I have my boy to tell me that um, he was sure he was artistic I can tell I'm artistic so it was just really fun uh, although uh, we did make the mistake the first day of like scheduling people through the afternoon. I showed up at two uh -huh. and he got a stroke. <laughs> it was before you got there. It was very lonely. It was, it was so sad. Real. Thank you for being <laughs> yeah. It was like the worst didn't do much, but I guarded everything. <laughs> yeah. Make sure that things didn't go the way so we can go have lunch with you. But honestly, it was so hot on the concrete because I filled in the green and uh, it was hot, yeah. So uh, we decided just to do like till twelve, till noon, which was uh, really a good idea. Is it finished there? It uh, that I think has almost all the black lines. There's me with my cat. And I noticed, <laughs> I noticed that Je Jennifer came back and, and and filled in some lines and like yeah. the sun's got smiley faces and stuff. So yeah. that was really cool. Yeah. yeah, so all the way around, of course, there's added components, and then we'll do a seek and find. So how many cats do you see? How many kites are there? And she named it Play by Play for Kite Park. Mm -hmm. So, cool. yeah. So now it's just to see how that paint And there's not going to be any graffiti going on? Well, so I had her, I asked her nicely, so there's a dog on one of the... Places. And I said, okay, I need you to paint like a bunch of tennis balls. So she painted a, a, you know, five feet of, of the sidewalk a bunch of tennis balls. So I'm going to go over there and I'm going to graffiti coat one and I'm going to try and ruin one and I'm going to power wash one and I'm going to see. I don't see how it works. Because I talked to another artist who used that graffiti coating and was playing with it in a printing press. And said so that the, the water just beads on it. But this paint is specifically made to have grit. If any of you do painting, like when you would 
put your when it started getting really hot and things were drying, like you could it was so viscous you could grab it and it was like a ball of, of sandy goo. Whoa. So it's really something. Um yeah, it is for it's what's that? Is it gonna take water? We did then it blew <laughs> when it was drying so fast. Yeah. But so my hope it, it's a basketball court, so it needs the grit so that people can do basketball things. Yes. Right. But um, so it's so we're gonna Wait, see. Um, how are you going to make it slip up? I, I, sure I think, I think, that I think so. Okay. Uh, but I have been working with this manufacturer since January, and I asked exactly that. And I said, well, you shouldn't have to. And so, if supposedly if we you know, get hit when we get hit, frankly, um, it's colored by numbers, right? And we have extra paint already on hand. So we just go and take care of it. We're just gonna have to play with it. But again, kind of same thing as the box cover under over until we have our methodology written down. We'll just see how this goes. The next piece, of course, too, is seeing how it performs on asphalt. Yeah. I took my friend over and showed it to him, and he was just he just said, "Oh, I have to bring my granddaughter here." You know, and there was a family with two kids, and they and the one kid was learning how to ride a bike, and they were just going, "Oh, I like that bird, and I like that fish." And so it's been it's been very well received. Oh, it really has. Did you end up going in for the poles? I was hoping there was something. She did. She put the paint on the poles, and the paint doesn't work on the wheels. So she, I think she went back to the and used her. I saw stripes. So I would say all in all, yeah, success. Awesome. Good job. Oh, good job. All right, moving on. Mural. Next, next time, we do one of these community things. We show it for you. That was the other thing that came up was yes. when when someone applies, we need to have a decompression meeting with Wayne Tomac from Community Neighborhood Services. But really, you know, if the grant actually like, Art in Public Places funds the art work. And the community brings the food and the people and the you know brings the community and we and the work one of the things that i think we could have done more successfully too is made we could pay for the flyer aspects or door hangers but then have the people in the community who apply for the grant go door to door meet your neighbors and tell them about it right since we know how to do this we'll bring our expertise in that way the community because that's what it is it's yeah. community building first and some art right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah band food all of those kinds of things i'm totally yeah right. that would yeah. help us <coughs> get people there to oh, yeah. experience yeah. the park and help paint it and whatever yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah speaking from a neighborhood who has joined mgla um and i'm not on the board of my homeowners association it is so hard to get community participation. Oh, yeah, I try for months mm -hmm. and grants. They don't yeah. have to go to the meetings, so it's really, really difficult. Which begs the question then, and I play devil's advocate. Yes, we should be working with Wayne, and yes, NGLA is absolutely something that exists and is a method. But what about the other communities who would value this kind of experience? Yeah. And that's the hard part. Yeah. Like, we have to find that middle ground where we can bring this same thing to others as well. So, this is established, and it's great because, you know, it covers a lot of the things that we haven't done, but I think finding that alternate methodology to getting to the same result in other communities is going to be something. Uh, Ninth and Alpine. All right. So um, I took all of the comments that were said last month. I met uh, well, Danielle. You were there. Who else was there? Who else was there? Oh, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Sorry about that. Right. Uh, we met with Carmen Ramirez, Wayne Tomac about uh, bilingual and, in fact, even multilingual similar messaging in the box folder. 
Mm. And I think the general consensus, consensus in Jane, just to interrupt me if I miss that, um, is absolutely makes sense. And the entire box culvert needs addressed. That said, the contract that we are under with this artist now is the contract that we are under with this artist now. So it is preferred by the artist, and I include the, the task force as well, I asked before you, that we continue and move forward with the English translation on the one side of the box over. I will pull up pictures here in a minute. And then I have a number for you for the rest of it. Longmont Wall 2, including two of and this is not a contract that I drafted. This would be, I have to develop the scope of work, rewrite the contract, get the artist to sign the new contract. Does that make sense? Everybody knows what I'm talking about? Okay. Uh, supplies, lodging and transport, new, new design, and mural execution with community participation of a total of 19444. 19444. Wow. 19,444 bucks. So, um, and that is to say that is the completion of the rest of the box over. Yes. Danielle. How much did we pay that first time? Um, he gave us the maintenance um, discount. So he got paid. And something for the original, and that was before my time. And then uh, this is an addendum to his original contract, right? So it falls under a maintenance and remediation line. This is what we're talking about now is a completely new contract to address the second side of the box culvert. It also in both of these instances, does not include the graffiti coating that is on us for both application and the supplies, which is very fair, I would say. Um, okay, let's look at some pictures. Okay. Yes, go ahead. To clarify one more time, we paid him 10000 approximately for the original thing before it was. Yes. And that was years and years and years ago, so. Right, a few years ago. And then the next, so he's under contract for one half of it, right? There. Correct. And then the second half will be the 19-4. Right, because the, the first contract was for remediation. Right. So let's look at what makes us crack, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it would be the worst of that. Oh yeah, this is actually when it wasn't meant. Right? Um, so at some point, there was still some things left. So the original contract was, you know, none of this had been damaged at that point, right? But then as it can, so then we went under contract for him to remediate, and that's the dollar figure that we're looking at now. Um, Thank you, James. So this is the third contract we've had with it? No, we're proposing the third. Yeah, closing, closing the third. Yes, yeah, correct. Closing the third one. Yes. How much for the very first year? Like ten something a And again, if you're thinking about value, just just take that, just take that, and throw it away. Okay. Just throw it away because that artist was in that place at that time with his qualifications at that point with his with his portfolio at that time, right? And then when it got damaged, then we are paying him for the addendum of the portion of this contract, which is the remediation, the fix, okay? That's what we're under contract now. That's what we need to execute in October. On the one on the first side. Right. I don't know why okay. I don't have the images of where it is because I confused this. Oh, no, that's, that's how much you get paid in blue. Because um, this is what it looks like now, mm -hmm. except when the guy going graffiti on top of it, and then the graffiti guy goes in and paints it blue again, right? So the more and more and more, the longer and longer and longer we wait, the bigger problems that we have, right? Right, because Just you can't coat it to... before it gets painted. Correct. Okay. Because you can't put the coating on and then take the coating off and then paint it and then put in the coating on. 
the solution at this point in time is to continue to paint it blue rather than the you know ugly gray boxes there, yeah. right? Yeah. It's real. Let's do this real. Yeah. Yeah. It's still it's still going to be cheaper to use, and, and I mean that in like the best term possible. Um, cheaper to basically use him to finish off the the job of the um, <coughs> of that whole area than seeking out another artist. I forgot what the lead one was. Okay. So, okay. so yes, so right. that would be he is spearheading the second portion and working with, and he said, our artist friend who is in town, who everyone loves, right? Right. He's going to subcontract. Cool. Whatever cool. other artist needs to be brought into this situation, because his artwork is on both sides of that box culvert. So when you come into that box culvert, it's his work, right? It's his painting. And we're not getting rid of, I don't know why, we're not getting rid of the elk, we're not getting rid of the um, mm -hmm. duck or whatever. Uh -huh. So using another artist either any either way to finish the work really wouldn't even be a possibility, basically. No. If okay. we do, then we are talking about getting rid of the help, getting rid yeah. of yeah. the thought. And like basically, yeah, we would have to like completely redo <coughs> about his work and at that rate and restart from ground one. So here's that, right? But long not together now is not on both sides in English, right? Long Lot Together is on one side in English, left to right, in tab. And then the other side stays blue until new design comes your way. Word Cloud, Long Lot United in, you know, other languages, bringing in another, bringing in another artist or artists to lend their voice and opinion, getting community feedback of what that looks like, basically starting from the new design phase of this whole thing. And likely, with some sort of messaging on that other side of the wall, with dates that says, a new design is underway. This is when we're meeting to look at the design. This is when we're planning on doing the community paint come spring. Because it's a box over, it looks really cold. And so not only does the paint adhesion temperature matter, but the box culvert stays really cold. So it, it can't even be like March, it's gonna be like May, okay. right? So we need to put some kind of signs up that say, mm -hmm. coming soon to this soon. spot near you. <laughs> yep, to this spot. Hey, you wanna participate? Yeah, you, you, you wanna you be a decision maker? Right. So in this meeting today, two things need to happen. Number one, I need the thumbs up that I can pull the trigger on the postcards that are designed to get people to sign up for October because that needed to happen yesterday, right? Um, but that means moving forward with the contract that we have under wraps, knowing that if you as a commission want to move forward with another side, this is the amount of money you're talking about. Working with this artist to do that sorry. Um, and to Danielle's point, if we deviate and go with a different artist from the other side, this artist yeah, may have something to say it. about the in and out, right? Yeah. So what you're looking for is a motion to accept the artist's price to do the second wall sometime next year. Yeah, that's and right. for us in the spring. Start, in the spring, and for us to start Moving on that project. Yep. That's Daniel project. and Jennifer on the task force. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, this really is a very large space. It's huge. I mean, it's it really huge. is huge. So when you're thinking about the amount of labor and putting that together and painting it, you know, $19,000 is kind of in the business of this one. I don't think plus that's he's plus he's paying other people yeah, and also right, right, exactly. I think it's a very reasonable one. Yeah, I mean because that's that's really a big space. So it's your, that's your, my only comment. Your spoke uh, is a forty thousand dollar project and it's less square footage than this. Yes, so, yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so as the very generous, as the very generous. But he wants to see this done right too. 
Yes, but also it's not personal business, yeah. right? So right. you have to have <laughs> cards. Right. Yeah. Any more questions or discussion? Did I make that motion? I so move. I second that motion. All right. Can we just make it an even 20? Sure. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. for an easy motion? Yes. yes. Thank you. I mean, um, obviously I have to go under contract. All right. Raise your hand if you approve the motion. Do we need to sign up for the community painting or the coordination of the community? Oh, buddies, y'all better have your volunteer <laughs> hats on because <laughs> we are going to be checking people in. We're going to be checking people out. Um, it's going to be, need to be a fairly coordinated effort, so kindly um, plus, right? Are we going to do anything of sending any messages to the school? Yeah. Oh, okay, because that would be. No, you can get them to sign up, but I, it's too short of a turnaround for doing like a very concentrated effort of have your um, you know school art class come and sign up because that requires our magical and what is oh, it? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we should ask the teacher to ask yep. our students if you want to yep. do this, please uh, sign up. Yeah. Yep. Right. Here's That's flyers. Yeah. Hand them out to all your kids in class. Here's the QR code. Yeah. Sign up. Absolutely, will do. All right, so keep an eye out for that volunteer uh, bit. And yeah. Okay. Gather the people, table. Uh, he sent me a note and said he didn't forget about me. Oh, that's good. <laughs> he mixed debating who is oh. the city comp citywide award. So they gotta do some that great one this down. He hasn't okay. he hasn't but he said he didn't forget about me, so uh, do you need the silos? Um, Dan Walford, who is the natural um, resources person, is retiring. Uh, so that's not a problem. It just means that I have to make new friends over there to learn about bank swallows and their migration times because we can't paint when they're nesting. But okay. just keep working on it. How can we do this free? Yeah. I mean, I'm not assuming it, but it seems like most of these birds nest. Right. So if we had a project and they nest in the spring, like when do they leave? Yeah. <laughs> Can we yeah. make it a fall project? How fast do these birds live? Yeah. <laughs> but it actually is a, a fairly considerable concern, and of course we're still at that moment of figuring out um, the paint or stucco or vinyl wrap. Um, anyway, and I'm still working on it, but we'll be talking about it um, in executive because we have to prioritize this project. Business? Um, December 15th. Didn't know if we want to meet somewhere and do holiday excitement or if we wanted to wait until after the holidays to celebrate or um, and or if we want to keep our December meeting. So I just leave it on there because sometimes you cancel it, sometimes you don't. I, I think we should leave this to the executive committee because I don't know what we're going to have on the agenda for something that we really need to meet about. What if I don't want to do the party before? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. okay. So what if we did the party and meeting on the same day? Yeah. Get in here yeah. and bring food and yeah. have a meeting and eat and make it easy. Fill two birds with one stone. I mean, people are busy. Yeah. It's December. Sure. We could make it a, a very short agenda with the only yeah. that are like but absolutely necessary. And enjoy. Okay. Think about it. Well, like, no, we, we just need to we, yeah, we just need to decide, especially if we're canceling it, then I need to put it on the calendar. But if we're keeping it and we're just making it a party, thumbs up. Well, uh, I'd like to also uh, propose we have um, having maybe a lunch in the private room while we're there at the cheese factory, which we we did with friends of a long time family about this size, ten people or whatever was lovely. Oh, you can do that. She can do orders of spheres, private oh, yeah. So, my, my view, uh, the uh, restaurant. my view that the way that um, commission dollars work okay. is all of the food that is provided okay. has to be open to the public at all times. So, we, anytime, you know, so we can't, um, 
we can't throw parties for ourselves for other people. Um, for example, if we do an art dedication, it's for everyone. So we can't. While well, we can do something like that, it would kind of be a BYO, D and B, and you know. All the, all the. But if we do it here, and we say it's public already right. invited. Yeah. So we and we can do potluck, and everyone can bring something for everyone. Yeah. 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 are going to go with them and we will end up re pouring in some amount of time. So wait, I knew the fountain was going away. What else is happening? There have been looks at a larger project. I without talking to LVDA about where they are and their funding and how much that came back with. Don't know if they're phasing it out or whatnot. Um, the other thing we had talked about with Art on the Move is twofold. Number one, um, kind of aligning more with the other rental projects that are like this, so we're installing at the same time as others. Um, and also, the two-dimensional artwork that's going to be here in the museum as well as in the, uh, the court, uh, safety and justice center, right? So, if those, um, if we lose places to mount artwork in St. Stephen's, one of the places that had been considered is here along 4th Street, and the reason why is you'll see this tree, and then you're going to see a whole lot of nothing. And the reason is because they're all tender. And so there's tree grades like here and here and here. And that's Maine here. And this is Maine on the left. And then there's an alley. And then it's Lang. And whoops. Anyway. Um, so, you're looking south. Yes, sorry. So, this is the west side. So, there's Ziggy's. So, now we're looking south. Okay, so now we're looking south. Anywho, look. Um, so this is very bare, yes. and there are five tree grades that are just perfectly curved, and you know, four plinths all along the Orange Street, and have a walk. Um, I bid out um, estimates through citywide contractors, and it's anywhere between fifteen and eighteen thousand dollars per per no. So um, there's one right in front of Firehouse. Um, we have the funds to be able to do it, and this I wish I could, I wish I could show you. Um, so this kind of um, brick area is looking pretty good. The papers look good. Eventually, and someday. Um, they'll probably have to re-floor the sidewalk, but this is staying where it is. The other thing that's happening along here 
his tracks, which that guy is like standing on. He's like looking at it right there. Um, this is Kaufman Street, right? So oh. Kaufman's about in some amount of time to get all torn up for our TV business, right? right? So it's a good spot, very visible, and it would give us more locations because, as you will recall, we're hoping that all of our changes for um, our charter are going to get changed for next fiscal year. So we'll have the ability to put in more temporary parks. So we could use all five of them, or we could use three of them at a time and put them in other places around town. Just gives us more opportunities. So say we do have spots around town that we have put. Yep. yep. We have three spots. Yep. There's a spot right behind the house. Yep. So it's not that it's going away. We would just be adding more, and it would look very intentional. Yeah. But it doesn't. Yes. And firehouse is right there. Yeah. Right. So, right. Yeah. So everything would have to fit on top of a. It would all be sculpture. Or that that's just going to be able to fit on top of a. Yes. It would, okay. it, we're talking about yeah the uh, oh they're like new plants. Oh, they're, they're just going to be low. Yeah, they're oh. just new. They're just new pedestal plants. Oh, okay. So with, then, with, with screws or something. It would be so. That's what I would also you know if we're investing in doing this something that's standardized, yeah. right? So then when the sculptures come about. You know, we put the little mounting thing on, and then it mounts to that, and then we take it off to keep them in nice shape. Because I don't know if you've seen the one in St. Stephen's recently, but they're they've seen they've they've seen you know fifteen years of the program. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> all around the church, all around the church, the church is thing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is the plaza. To the south. How much did you say that that bid was or the estimate was? I got two bids back between um, fifteen and eighteen thousand, and I'm waiting on my third because I have to get out three. Yeah. So that's, that's the ones on fourth. Yes, yeah, the ones on fourth. Oh, not the one. No, not five on. along fourth. Then what about this also? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. And that's in the tree breaks. Or what yes, the where the existing is. curbs are, so yeah. there it is. If they're going to fix that, make it look nice, and make it look super intentional. And again, you can imagine that there's very public okay, as so they are. Right there. And that also includes digging out the tree, digging out the root, you know, the whole bit of it. But this was just an example? This is one of the five. Oh. So they, these go oh, all right. down oh, this tree. Right. There's actually a tree there. That tree may or may not be there anymore. It might be that one, that one. <coughs> like look at those dead look trees. Tree. <laughs> so all these trees are dead and gone. Yeah. And there's just these. Yeah. So just like my preference would be to like maybe alternate a plant a tree. It seems a little bit stark to me to just have like five sculptures, boom, 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 and maybe have kind of on the other side of the street or around the corner or something. I love the idea yes. that it's to going to the firehouse because that's kind of like the center for art, you know, sure. art walk stuff. But is there so what is the does the city forester? Yes. Is what I was just gonna say. So we have to work around what their plans are. This would not be instead of a tree. These are places that oh yeah, no, the dead tree is cut off, it's in the ground, and nothing's going back there. No, no dead tree side, no trees going. Yep. Oh, okay. And you were gonna tell the other side of the street doesn't look like it has no, it's not on the other side of the street, but it's just see, look at how nice those ones are. Yeah. So, anywho, um, this again, you know, coming up with through Kimberly and talking about the where St. Stephen's is, where it is going, and thinking about keeping park on the move downtown, knowing that there's a very, very, very good chance that we're going to have more funds for temporary work. But if St. Stephen's isn't there, we're going to be very much 
downtime. If after St. Stephen's is yeah. redone, and if we have places to put art there, yeah. will that make this weird if we only had like one thing there one year and three things at St. Stephen's? You may start to conceive of actually purchasing things coming out of Art on the Move and curate, <laughs> curate that art walk and actually install art there and art leave it the and leave it there. Art on the move walk. Yeah. Or you know, if so you want people. to start looking at direct purchases by all going to the sculpture show next August and sure. looking at you know art that can be purchased directly, and that's part of your way with our program to work, right? But also, I don't think it'll be weird. No, yeah. I mean, it's really just going to be, you know, like, kind of step. Um, so if there's nothing on it, it's not going to be interesting. It'll look better than it looks now. Right. I'll tell you that. <laughs> because I live, I live to complicate my life. Could somebody round and somebody square and somebody? No, you're not going to do that to me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just do we need to have a photo that you can hang from us? What's up? What you can from us? Like, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, it would be so um, to our budget can hold it this fiscal year, but to pour concrete, uh, a certain temperature needs to be, we need to stay within a certain temperature. So, yeah, I would love a permission to, or if you agree to build new plants, uh, yeah, to go forward with it as long as it stays under some threshold. I think under 20,000 is completely reasonable. Any question that we go ahead and put in five plus um, for the next 20,000? Um, for the next 20,000. Any question? I said a lot of people second. Yeah. Ooh, so I yeah. 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 All in favor, raise your hand. hand. Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Fantastic. Great. Setting right. ourselves up, and I think with that, we have Commissioner Thomas. Uh, Commissioner Thomas. I would like to say, did anybody see the great part of Public Places little blurb in the in the newspaper magazine yes. which showed our rejuvenation project and the lady and the damsel and the great folks by right. Angela? Thank you. It was wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we left Matt. He's, he left the leader, and now he's with Boulder Weekly, and that's a it's called Inside Longmont. And it's actually they do it once a year, so those magazines will be up and around for a year. Yeah. I do uh, I have a lot of stairs up at uh, the I saw on the way out. You know, one of those racks. So when we go to a restaurant, one of those racks in the floor. Tangerine. Ooh, it's so good. It's a Boulder Weekly. On one side it's inside Boulder, and the other side it's inside Longmont. You know, it's one of those. So yeah. And the inside Longmont one has Guiana's um, Generations. Going down some rabbit holes, I just had a couple of things I wanted to ask about. Um, asking for a quick answer to my question. Did anything get damaged in St. Stephen's Plaza of our art program? Not going in now. Oh, thank you, God. Okay, yes. We're so grateful. All right. Now, I don't know what is happening with this, or maybe Shakita knows more or something, but is there any talk of any kind of memorial in Kensington Park? Yes. And would we be somehow involved? Yes. Okay. Um, without going again too far down a hole, um, Carmen Ramirez, actually, and her partner came to paint at Kitely, and she asked that any remediation that we're doing on the Unity Project wait. Uh, the family has been looking into some certain sort of memorial, but um, is now working with Carol and the city on doing something more celebratory. They will be coming to us. We will be involved, and that will be quick and will probably be our number one priority. Okay, that would be great. Yeah, because yeah. I've been talking to the mayor. Yeah. And actually, yeah, someday recently, like yesterday, I was walking by there. And a bunch of city trucks and guys were out there and they were all like looking up and looking down. We're all like looking because usually I stop and ask what are they doing. And they were looking to see where they're gonna put cameras. And also the arborist was there checking the trees. So but you know things are happening. I know that they're happening, but we yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um what is the status of the Duke Barrys? It's still in its box. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and the comments for me. 
Did you read our sign? I know it's very cute. This is I'm hibernating. I'm hibernating. <laughs> <laughs> now he's he's in good shape, and the uh, registrar goes over there fairly recently or regularly to make sure that there's no moisture building up on the inside because we don't want to create a microclimate, um, basically. But uh, no, he's he's fine. And okay. the, that new building owner would really love to have him in town. All the other municipalities were very intrigued by the that. Yeah. <laughs> but that is oh, that was signing her. Yeah, I'm like, is that really a beer? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's really a beer. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I was uh, I was down by Whippy yesterday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 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 um, <laughs> and I was taking a picture of the shop art with the blaster there, and across the street is the. Um, was the gamma painting of yeah. the yeah. so yeah. it's they yeah. demolished as we speak. Yeah, yeah. my youth both gone. It's it's gone. gone. It's I followed him on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. He had a lot of video feed of it um, going on I noticed in the um the side over there with the blooper that they painted he painted um the rust colored lines on the right. Was a caged bird. It was a caged bird. It was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Brain. Yeah. Amazing. Right. Wait. Anybody say that? Motion. Everybody say that. Everybody say that.